It's Thursday, September 14th. Welcome to TV7 News. I'm Paul Hukalak. Today, we talk about a new universal accessibility plan for the city of St. Albert, the mayor's upcoming State of the City speech, and the start of rugby playoffs. But first, well, the city is warning that there are some changes coming to what you can and cannot put in your blue bag for recycling. Items no longer accepted for recycling include glass bottles and jars, plastic packaging from toys, food, or household items, plastic clam shells from berries, salad, or baking, single-serve plastic cups from yogurt, pudding, or sauces, single-serve to-go cups from coffee, fountain drinks, smoothies, or solo-style cups, spiral wound containers from chip cans, paper coffee cans, frozen juices, and ready-to-bake pastries, and Tetra Pak containers without a deposit from soup, broth, or liquid eggs. From now on, you're being asked to put those items in their brown garbage cart. Things that are still acceptable in the blue bin, plastic food and household bottles, lids and containers, aluminum cans, pie plates and containers, paper greeting cards and gift wrap, office and craft paper, uh, magazines, flyers, newspapers and catalogs, books with hard and soft covers removed, cardboard, and box board such as a cereal box. You're reminded anything put into the recycling must be clean and dry. The city would also like everyone to be able to get around in all municipal buildings and public spaces. Now with that in mind, it's released its Universal Access Plan, which helps prioritize which actions are needed to provide barrier-free access to residents with mobility issues. The Universal ha Access Plan will help the city prioritize actions needed to implement um, universal and barrier-free access in city facilities and public spaces. The plan gives a list of recommended actions for the city to take and a list of areas to focus on. The areas include exterior pedestrian routes, f uh, city facilities such as rec centers and parking facilities, transit services and in infrastructure, and policy and process improvements. The initial prioritization is a, a review of the Fountain Park, City Hall and Service Place to determine uh, what areas need to should be improved. Universal access is, is slightly different than barrier-free access because what it does is it uh, tries to make spaces better for everyone by not concentrating on a specific disability um, and it can also be used for people who are parents using strollers or um, people who are carrying large packages or um, just have a temporary disability. Usually when we think of, of universal accessibility we think of people who are already disabled Whereas people, people's abilities change as their life goes on. You could have a temporary disability from a you know, broken leg or, um, or an injury up to being pregnant, you know, having children, and then as you get older, needing a walker and eventually possibly a wheelchair. Hmm. So your life, you know, life changes and our abilities change as we get older. The plan will be rolled out through a phased program, starting with the Universal Accessibility Facility Audit of St. Albert Place, Fountain Park Pool, Service Place, and their associated parking lots. And in addition to looking at how they can make St. Albert more accessible, the city is also exploring improvements to transportation. September 10th, the city presented its first Intelligent Transportation System Strategic Plan and Implementation Strategy. The goal of the plan is to use new technologies and innovations to help ease traffic congestion, minimize environmental impacts, provide real-time information to users, and increase the effective and efficient movement of people and goods in St. Albert. The ITS strategy has been underway since June with a focus on St. Albert Trail. Among the changes made to St. Albert Trail include significant improvements to traffic signal controls, which can now use real-time information to help manage the flow of traffic through the day. Uh, move forward on what's uh, been a shift in our traffic signal operations towards an adaptive system, uh, where what we're using is advanced detection to essentially gather information on vehicles approaching intersections and looking at the larger kind of corridor movement to create better efficiency for the flow. We started in 2018. Um, we essentially, through the, throughout uh, 2010, actually back to 2010, is when we started laying the foundation work for the network to be 
capable of taking on uh, in the intelligent transportation systems technologies. So laying the groundwork of uh, basic uh, vehicle detections, changing to video detection, uh, laying the foundation of the fiber communication system which connects the networks, the intersections to a kind of a, a, a means transportation management hub. Um, and then now we're at the point with all those capabilities and the, uh, the system that we have, we're making a shift towards um, one of the first, first priorities is adaptive signal control. And that's a movement that we've been focused on in 2018 along the St. Albert Trail. In comparison to the past where there were certain parameters set, you were looking at a very focused uh, a set of amount of time, a time of day plan it's called, that you would kind of put in place and have it set for a duration of period like an AM peak of 6 AM till 9 PM. Um, this essentially now the system uses the detection to say, with what the vehicle movements are upstream and downstream and on the side streets of the full corridor, it's saying that in that real time it's taking into account those demands and saying per location, it's saying what's best efficient for that per location, but also looking and communicating with the downstream uh, intersections as well in proximity and saying it's, this is most efficient for the corridor. The city has also installed Bluetooth travel time devices along the road which can measure operations on the road network and may be shared with road users, users to assist in travel planning. So moving forward, there's a lot of different strategies. I think uh, in and about, so there's 40 strategies within that plan. It's within the total encompassing plan itself. So, you know, there's a substantial amount of activity um, that uh, fully implement the plan. By no means adaptive uh, signal operations is just one small component of it. So it's a priority for us. Um, and the plan's been implemented or, or proposed at any rate in a, in a kind of prioritized way that our current resources can, can be allocated towards. Um, but moving forward, it's ultimately just you know, looking at the, uh, the technologies that are out there, applying them, evaluating them, and making sure that it's, it's best for our system and then working efficiently, effectively, and then expanding potentially on those, on those for greater use. The city will evaluate the St. Albert Trail improvements over the next year and then make a decision if the changes should also be rolled out in other locations. This upcoming Wednesday, Mayor Kathy Heron will be giving her inaugural State of the City address. She'll be talking about where St. Albert currently finds itself, the challenges and opportunities facing the community, and the future it has to look forward to. The State of the City address is hosted by the St. Albert Chamber of Commerce. After the break, a look at some local sporting clubs as the fall season gets underway. St. Albert isn't just a great place to raise a family. St. Albert is home. Hi, I'm Kim Ovalinski. Living and loving St. Albert for over 30 years. I'd love to help you buy or sell a home. We are working really hard to bring you quality local entertainment. We hope you're happy with our results. Every child deserves a clean, safe environment. Proudly servicing St. Albert families for over 18 years. Enchanted Forest Daycare. Turning now to some local sports, playoff season is here for the St. Albert Rugby Football Club. Club President Simon Hill says some big games are getting underway shortly. So, uh, yeah, next weekend uh, we, we start off with playoffs, so semi-finals of the Edmonton area, and then the winner of that uh, goes on to the, the final of the Edmonton region, and the winner of that match then goes to the provincial finals. Uh, the semi-final will likely be here. We've got to see how the final standings roll out, right? Um, and then uh, the, the final for the Edmonton region, that, that'll be at the Ellerslie Rugby Park. Uh, we, we've got a link on our website, so stabbertrugby.com, um, and also the Edmonton uh, Rugby Union, they've, they've got the schedule as well. Meantime, fall registration is underway for St. Albert Sports and Rec. We sat down to talk with them this week to talk about St. Albert's Premier Co-Ed Recreation League. If one of your favorite memories growing up happens to be intramural sports, then maybe a recreational sports league is for you. I've recently had the opportunity to sit down with a couple of the founding members of St. Albert Sports and Rec, Mary and Wendy. We played in a community uh, in Edmonton, in a community flag football team, I guess, and um, 
We were just sitting around one day and said, this is something that we should be playing locally. We're driving all over Edmonton, yet we live in St. Albert. So it just felt like, why don't we have this idea here locally where adults can get out and get active and play a sport in our city? Covering what matters to you. For TV7.ca News, I'm Lisa Rufiange. For the full interview, you can visit our website, tv7.ca. You can join Mayor Heron in rolling up your sleeves for a tree planting event this weekend. In June, the city received a matching grant for $5,005 to implement a CN Eco Connections from the Ground Up project. These grants from CN Railway and Tree Canada are meant to be put toward community greening projects in Canada. In addition to remarks from the Mayor and St. Albert MP Michael Cooper, the event will include tree planting, live entertainment and a barbecue. If you'd like to help green up the city, you're invited to join in on the fun at Kingswood Park this Saturday, September 15th, starting at 10 a.m. Work continues on some local roads through the summer and into the fall. Until November, there are in intermittent lane closures on St. Albert Trail, north of Neil Ross Road, as work continues on a new intersection for Aaron Ridge. Due to construction, there is a temporary lane closure off St. Albert Trail southbound to westbound St. Mattel Avenue. No right turns are being permitted there. You can detour on McKenney Avenue or Muir Drive. And the City of Edmonton also wants St. Albert residents to know there's roadway construction on 127th Street, just north of the Anthony Henday. That goes until November, and you can expect delays. As summer turns to fall, Scarecrows will be taking over Kinex Arena this Sunday. September 16th, you and your family are invited out for an annual Scarecrow Skate. The event is free for the whole family and will feature skating, games, hot chocolate and Timbits. The event gets underway at 1.45 p.m. and runs until around 3.15 p.m. And that'll do it for today. Don't forget, if you have any news tips or community events you'd like to share with our viewers, you can email us at news at tv7.ca or message us on our Facebook page. From all of us here at tv7.ca, I'm Paul Hookalack.